plow planes tended to be among the most elaborately decorated and costly planes in a carpenter's toolkit. We have three examples here. The first is an example of Emanuel Carpenter's 1838 patent, one of the earliest known plane patents. All plow planes need a fence that rides along the outside of the board and governs the distance of the groove from the edge. The fence has to be adjustable and must be capable of being locked so that it remains absolutely parallel to the body of the plane. Early plow planes used sliding arms that were locked with wedges or thumb screws but Carpenter pioneered the use of arms with a screw thread that could be locked in place with nuts. All later plow planes following Carpenter are screw arm planes. This rosewood plow plane by the Greenfield Tool Company of Connecticut, in addition to being ivory tipped, has locking arms comprised of a layer of ivory between two layers of boxwood. They were among the most expensive plow planes available during the era. This plow plane was made by H. L. Kendall of Baltimore. Many plow planes have a strip of harder wood, sometimes even metal, along the edge of the fence to keep it from wearing out and becoming uneven. Because boxwood was usually used for this purpose, this is known as boxing. This plane, however, uses three dovetailed bone inserts for this purpose. In addition, there are bone inserts on the underside of the fence surrounding the screw heads that hold the fence to the shoulder and there is a bone plate in the side of the plane. Decorative plow planes like this were often used as a presentation, and this plane may have been sold with the intention that the name of the person being honored would be engraved on this plate. <laughs>